What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking why I think the Flash TV show will work. I mean, just my opinion. I haven't seen it yet, but I think it'll work. Um, we're talking about how Master Chief might not be the lead character of Halo 5. What a travesty. Why would they do And we're talking something that everybody else is talking about the Avengers. Now, I wrote the story first, just so you know. Everybody else is copying off of me. Here we go. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. And what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. How come I'm only set to you? My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo! That was an excited yo. I like that. Yeah, bringing a little energy, little vibe, zest to the to the show. I, all right, zest is a bad word to use. I'll never use that word again. I promise you, listeners. But we zest. are the one and only home. Yeah, I'll use that more. Uh, we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca chainsaws. <laughs> and that's Brendan, terrified of the Wookiee as usual. Yes. I. I, I would it you be? Uh, Aren't you? Um, uh, I mean, me and him have developed more of a relationship where I, I kind of am not scared of him all the time. Just, just about 95% of the time. See, I can tell what he said. He said, this one is just to scare Brendan, not you, Brian. So I was like, all right, cool, cool, Chewy. That's, that's cool with me, you know. So, yeah, but as you saw on tonight's show, it is our entertainment show. We are doing another Tuesday night special. It's always funny when we do Tuesday night specials because that's also the name of the band who did our theme song, so... Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, because the Redskins played last night, and uh, we'll talk about that game on Thursday. But we didn't embarrass ourselves. How about that? Yay! Ah, yay! Kind of. Yeah, kind of a little bit. We still lost. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah. So let's start it off the same way we start off every entertainment show, and that is with the horrible movie of the week. <laughs> And so this week was a movie that I watched, not necessarily expecting it to be bad. I actually watched it because I was like, yeah, this looks pretty cool. Popped up on my Netflix. It actually had five stars on Netflix, or probably if you could rate it out, it was like 4.8 out of five stars, which is a pretty high rating. I was very surprised. I was like, hey, this looks cool. I'm interested yeah, in very this. few movies get that high. Yeah, and I was like, hey, you know, this this might be pretty cool. And, um, yeah, it turned out to make my horrible movie of the week. And so this movie that I watched was Captain Harlock, the Space Pirate. Oh, I saw that. I saw that on Netflix, too. I thought that looked pretty awesome. Yeah, did you see what initially, I'm saying? Initially, I thought that was a candidate for a bad movie just based off the name. I was like, oh, this is going to be like a B-movie thing. But then I saw it had a good review. I was like... Okay, cool. Someone did a space pirate movie that was good? Nice. And I also read reviews online, and apparently this was a cartoon back in the day, and it was a Japanese cartoon. I don't know if it ever made it to America, but a lot of people really loved it. Really loved it. And I got to say that one thing good about this movie, before we start trashing this movie, um, it's probably the best-looking CGI I've ever seen in movie form. I mean, that includes video games that put their movie cutscenes in, or whole CGI movies. It's the it's just, it's almost flawless. Like, there are times where, not when they're showing people, but there are times when they're showing, like, atmosphere and other things that I think that uh, I'm watching not a CGI movie. I'm watching a real real people movie. So, and Bruno, I'm kind of getting some static in the headphone. There we go. No static now. But, uh, yeah, so I started off watching. I was like, okay, you know, probably not too bad. Um, and then the problem started. So I only have four reasons this week why you should not watch it. But let's start with number one. And number one is the voices do not sync up with the mouths. Now there's a Ooh. couple things Ooh, that can... That's just an editing problem. Yeah, there's a couple things that can really take you out of the movie, and that is one of them. Um, because you can tell they probably changed the mouths to actually say English words, because it looks like it. But it's just not coming out at the same time. So was this supposed to be a 
dub movie? Because you said it was originally like some Japanese show. Yeah, was this I, originally I, I a do, Japanese movie? I do believe it was. So yeah, it's redubbed, but it does look like they did did do the work to make the mouths look like they were saying the proper words. So every now and then, and every now and then, it looked like they were saying something totally different, which they probably were. But it just didn't sync. I mean, it's mm. like, you know, the old Godzilla movies. There's Godzilla. Where is he over there? You know, st- stuff like that. It just. I don't know. I, I think that can sometimes be all right and fun, but I, I guess if in old movies there was that charm because they clearly weren't trying to do anything that was low budget, but this sounds like it was supposed to be a big production. So, yeah. Like I said, best CGI I've ever seen in a movie. Best. Absolute best. Animators, you did. Tip-top job. The rest of you guys, let us down. Uh, now, and also... On top of that, I was going to make this another separate reason, but it's going to go with it. Um, very poorly voice acted, which you see with a lot of American ports, but they've been getting better and better and better recently, and this just... There wasn't any emotion to it. Sometimes you could tell that the actors were just reading something off of a script, not really knowing any context, so you can't really do anything for it, so it's pretty disappointing that. If you need a new voice actor, hey, I'm your guy. And I was just going to hold that until Brendan said, oh, But yeah, so let's I move on. I was trying to think of what I could possibly do to that. That was just... <laughs> I was like, what, what is this? What am I supposed to do to this? Uh, but let's move on to the number two reason you should not watch this movie. And that is um, really, there's no character development almost at all. They try to kind of force you into some character development that doesn't really work. You never become attached to any of the characters. And so you really just don't care what happens to them throughout the movie. So... Yeah, it's kind of hard to drive the plot, a character-driven plot, when you just don't care what happens to him. You're like, oh, he died or whatever. Good, he should have died. Like, Brian, 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 Brian. This is a space pirate captain. Yeah, but the captain is not... See, Captain Harlock is not even the main character in this movie. Again, like I said, maybe if they made him the main character, you would be like, oh, cool, but no, mm -mm, they never do that. They make some other guy the main character. Why am I bothering to watch this movie, then? I'm not. Now I'm not going to. Well, it's, you, I hope not. I'm already saying it's on the horrible movie of the week. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> All right, number three reason you should not um, watch this movie. They keep going, flashing back to this event in the main character's life where it's supposed to be kind of like the turning point in his life. He changes, he doesn't necessarily change his life, but... All right, I'll just tell you this. He's trying to plant some flowers on Mars or something like this in a greenhouse, and his brother and his sister-in-law are there, and he loves his sister-in-law... And she kind of loves him, so it's kind of a weird love triangle. But all of a sudden, he's like, I need to do this. I need to do this. And runs over to this valve that is, like, taped over, like, a million times with, like, caution tape. And it says, do not turn valve. Warning, explosion. And he turns the valve for some reason and explodes everything, killing his sister-in-law and crippling his brother. And they never explain why he turns the valve or what this valve did or why everything exploded afterwards. So you're just like... So, he just wanted to blow everything up with them inside it? Uh, don't quite get it. He couldn't deal with his love for his sister-in-law, so he decided she must die. Yeah, well, I, that's the best explanation I can think of right there. So, yeah. Um, and so, reason number four, you should not ro- watch this movie. It's one of those movies, and Japanese movies do this a lot, especially, like, video games and stuff. Like, the Metal Gear Solid series is famous for this. But um, after 150 million twists, nothing still makes sense. Because they're like, hey, you want to do this, but wait, there's a twist. And then it's like, hey, we want to go to Earth, but wait, there's a twist. And then, hey, we're at Earth, but wait, there's a twist. It just none of it makes sense. Just too many twists, and like you twist, and you're like, oh, wow. And then they twist it again, and it's like, oh, wait, no. And then they twist it again, no, hey. And it just feels like your head just wants to pop off because nothing makes sense. So what I'm hearing is your head hurts, Brian, because you don't get it. Yes. Um, yes. You Brian and has a five-twist limit. I mean, what movie needs more than three twists? Three twists should be max. That's what I'm saying. That's it. Okay. Only three. Yeah, because otherwise you lose count. 
No, it's just because it doesn't make sense after that. There's no point. Like, if you, your twists are supposed to be good because they build up to a certain point, and it's like, oh my gosh, they just went a totally different direction. But if you just keep going different directions, you never build up any one direction to make a twist make sense. It's just, it, it was infuriating. It's like, okay, there's a twist. Oh wow, that's interesting. And then they're like, wait, we just lied to you. It's like, what? I mean, what? What's the point of writing a script if I could write a script? Okay. We can go to Earth. Oh, wait, no, we can't. Oh, wait, now we can again. Oh, wait, let's not go there. Oh, hey, we're going there. It's like, oh, you know, it's just like, it does not make sense. I, I wish I we had the sound effect for Johnny Cochran in South Park going, it does not make sense, because it didn't. That's all I kept thinking during the whole movie. This does not make sense. And, like, that one clip kept going through my mind over and over and over. It does not make sense. So... Yeah, and now I'm actually going to give this a decent rating. It's going to get two Chewbacca Chainsaws out of five. And you might be like, well, that's not a decent... For a horrible movie that week, it's a decent rating. And most of this, like one whole Chewbacca Chainsaw, is because it looked amazing. The whole movie was gorgeous from beginning to end. So, yeah, that was it. So, stay away from Captain Harlock, Space Pirate. It does not make sense. It doesn't matter how many twists they try to throw in there. And, and people will be like, oh, you're just dumb. You don't get it. I got every single one of them. All right? None of them were good. Although, now, the other thing to be fair about, two of those uh, problems you had seem to be primarily related to the dub work. So, maybe so, in the original it was better, it was significantly better. You know, and maybe there were some translation issues from Japanese to English. Yeah, so um, may, maybe it was the American production co uh, company that just screwed everything up or something like okay, that. Okay, well, I mean, but, but honestly, totally yes, there is some translation differences from languages, but there's not that much of a translation difference as long as you translate almost have word, to for, word for but word. But you know, some of the times down. they dumb things down for American audiences or do like weird crap for American audiences. Well, then they're stupid for doing that because then they ruin their own movie. Yeah, or video games. Like, that was or the story games. of uh, Mystic Quest. They thought, hey, Americans can't get Final Fantasy. Let's make a stupid version of Final Fantasy. Mm. Mm -mm. But here you go. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, that was our horrible movie of the week. So let's move it on. Hopefully something that'll be good because if it's anything like Harlock, I'm just going to just, mm, it's not going to be pretty. But uh, And that is uh, talking about the Flash TV show. Now, most of you out there will be like, yeah, you know, it's just another superhero thing. There's flood and TV with it. But I'm going to give you some reasons why I actually think it'll be good. Now, it did air tonight. The premiere was tonight. Did not get to watch it. I did have to work. And then I had to do the show. So I will watch it. I will give it a shot. But this is my thinking before it hits the airs, airwaves. And so number number one, I have a lot of lists tonight. Actually, I think this is the last list. But number one is that it is a spinoff of the CW Arrow show. Now, this is a direct spinoff. I believe sometime in season two, Barry Allen, who becomes Flash eventually, does show up in that show, kind of setting him up for his own show. And I, I like that because Arrow, whereas it is does have its moments, is a genuinely good show I like. Uh, I thought they, they took a really good, deep, dark look at what a zero, superhero is. Uh, now, Arrow kills, like, a ton of people. Was that a sound effect, or was that actually outside? That's actual thunder outside this yeah. room walls. I was like, man, that sound effect sounds good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Maybe we should it's record like, that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so they, they take a deep, dark look at Arrow, Green Arrow as a superhero. <laughs> And, like, he's actually running around killing lots of people. It's actually pretty entertaining. If you haven't seen Arrow, it is on Netflix. I believe Season 2 comes out tomorrow on Netflix. Season 3 actually airs on the CW tomorrow. So I, I do like that. I think the, the direction they're going with that is really good. So a spinoff show, probably pretty cool. Uh, another reason I think it'll be good is Flash, I believe, is an underrated superhero. Now, a lot of people will be like, oh, he's just fast. But he does so many cool things. He's one of the original Justice League members. He's one of the best comic book characters, one of the longest lasting ones for a reason. Because he mixes the action with the good quirky sense of humor. So you don't and, quite go down the dark road of some of the other superheroes. And 
if when he knows how to use his powers, when he uses his powers properly, he's really one of the most powerful superheroes mm-hmm. there is, too. Like people think of him as like, oh, he's just got speed, but he's got more than that. He can vibrate his molecules to walk through buildings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember seeing that on the Super Friends the first time being like what? What do you mean? It feels like they finally captured all the super friends and they put them in a like underground in a brick room with no exits or anything, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, so guess what, guys? If I vibrate my molecule, I can walk through this wall." <laughs> I'm just gonna do this now. Hey, hey. <laughs> but, so, but couldn't you do that like just constantly and never get hit? He's also. I, I guess it doesn't he... matter because they're so fast, but. I don't... But I also what? like him as the jokester. He's also the guy that, you know, he'll be zooming by, see two pretty ladies, and then zoom right back and be like, hey, ladies, and then zoom back onto what he's doing. You know, he's he brings a lighter yeah, side to some of these comics. Yeah. And, you know, I love the darker comics, especially the, you know, the Batmans, the dark direction they've gone. But that's because Batman, he kind of has to be dark, you know, because he's fighting a whole city of corruption. Central City, where Flash is from, doesn't seem to be as corrupt. It seems to be more of a an every man's town, a, a nicer city, just so Ooh. happens a random particle storm fly, rolls through. That's what they, they're doing with the premise of the show. A particle storm rolls through due to an experiment of some sort from Star Labs, and Flash gets his powers, but so do a lot of other people, and not so many yeah, and His personality fits with, with his powers, because his personality, he's essentially the, the fast-talking guy. Like, mm-hmm. He's a little bit slick and everything, and he just tries to talk all smooth and fast. But he's not always very good at it. But it's funny because he just, you know, spurts off a million jokes a minute or a million pickup lines a minute, whatever he's gonna do. So it, it works with his speed personality. So, yeah, so, I'll so I, I'd like to see that that side of the comics again. It, I love the dark side, but a little bit of the lightheartedness is always good. So my last reason that I think it'll be good is DC just has a good track record for TV shows in general. Yeah, uh, not movies, but TV shows, definitely. TV shows, yeah. I didn't say movies. <laughs> like, um, they have a few good movies, but... Well, the, yeah. I, well, the Batman, the recent Batman trilogy, a couple of the classic Batmans. But outside of Batman, it's kind of hard to find a good one. Man of Steel wasn't horrible as a Superman movie, but... I know a lot of people that still love the first two Superman movies. And that's because those are campy fun. I mean, those... Yeah. So. But, but it, and also, back when they were made, that was you know a good quality movie, and they, yeah. you hadn't really seen um, very good superhero movies at that time. Because those mm-hmm. were really, what, early 80s, so, late 70s? Uh, mid-70s. One? I think 76 was Superman 1, so somewhere around yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you look at just TV shows, especially, and on... On the CW, you had Smallville. I was a fan of that when it first came out. Oh, Didn't yeah, watch we watched past season like four or five. Past that, it kind of got jumped the shark, but season one through four were solid. Um, Arrow, like I just said, was a really good one, and this is a direct spinoff off of it. Uh, you have Gotham on Fox, which I need to watch last night's episode, but Gotham has been awesome so far. Um, and then you look at the animated shows, the Batman animated series from back in the 90s. That was amazing. Uh, Danny Elfman did the track, the soundtrack to that. It was just, uh, The that Superman one that was associated with it was also done yeah. pretty well. See, Superman. I don't really like Superman. I don't either, but I character. the show was done pretty well. But the Justice League cartoon and the Justice mm-hmm. League Unlimited were, were awesome. Um, so, you know, they and, and some of the animated movies, if you haven't checked out any of their animated movies, like Justice League Doom, Flashpoint Paradox... Uh, Son of Batman, Batman Returns 1 and 2. I mean, there's a couple really good animated movies out there that never made it to theaters, but, you know, that are really good. So I just think the DC TV animated, now this won't be an animated show, but the TV universe is a lot better than, I don't know, Marvel doesn't really have a counterpart, so. Not yet. They're working on it, though. And you'll you'll find out more of that later. Well, wait, wait a second. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., well, that's one, yeah, but... Yeah, uh, so there we'll you go. About. I mean, that's one. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Yeah, that is one, and I haven't seen that show. And it had a whole bunch of superheroes in it, so... And I've never been interested in watching that. I don't know why. I just haven't. And they do have a cartoon set up, though, that was always very good, so... Well, or, the X-Men cartoon was, was great. Point, very good. X-Men and I've seen Spider- a couple... Uh, X-Men Spider-Man, yeah, the 90s Spider-Man was awesome. Um, and there was X-Men... Uh, Wolverine and the Man X-Men, too, that was like a Nickelodeon show. Wolverine and the X-Men, but that was awesome. Um, yeah, the Iron Man cartoon was 
Eh, not bad. Fantastic Four, not bad. The Hulk, not bad. But yeah, it was an all right for for you know Saturday morning cartoons. They those were the staples of Saturday morning cartoons for a long time. Yeah, for a while, and then and, but but if I'm looking back on them, I can go back and watch those Justice League cartoons, and I actually have recently. And I don't necessarily want to go back and watch the Spider Man as much, or the I can't watch the Iron Man Hulk one. I tried to. That was just. Pfft. But when I was a kid, it was fun. So yeah. yeah. Didn't really hold up as well. But so, yeah, I, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Should Is Flash good? Did you watch tonight's episode? Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter. Words for My Face at gmail.com. Words for My Face dot com. Uh, Google Place and Google, Google Place. Yeah, Google Place. Because that's, that's right. Google Place. And if you don't have <laughs> a Google Place, Google Place you will now. <laughs> Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let us know what you think. Um, am I stupid for thinking that? Or, or you saw it and you thought it was pretty good? You know, let us know. So let's move that on and talk more superheroes because tonight is going to be superhero night. And that is because everybody has stolen my topic. All right, I stole it from somebody else. Granted. But I want to talk about Avengers and their plans for the future because everybody knows about some of the contractual issues. I believe Robert Downey Jr. was signed on for two more Marvel movies as Iron Man. Um, Everybody thought it would be Iron Man 4 and Avengers 3. So, past Avengers 2, he signed on. Um, You have Chris Evans, only signed on for two more. One of those is going to be Captain America 3 that we already know about. And everybody thought that the other one would be Avengers 3. And then you have Chris Hemsworth, who's being a big baby. He doesn't like playing the Thor character. I don't know why he doesn't like playing a character that has made him bazillions of dollars. Bazillions. Has it? Well, I'm sure it has. I'm, I'm sure it's made him... And because it's given him every other role he's had since. And I've heard somewhere, I don't like bulking up to play Thor. Oh, sorry, you don't like being paid to get a personal trainer and looking like, you know, uh, a, a Norwegian god. Who, who, who would like that? Yeah, uh, well, to be oh. fair, the Thor movies were not the best. No, they weren't. But they still made a ton of money, and they still made him an actor. They put him on the map. I'm trying to think of anything he was in before that, and I can't. That movie. It was in that movie. That movie. Yeah, you remember that movie. movie? Yeah, you know what movie yeah. I'm talking about. That movie. So, so the rumors that are circulating around is that Avengers 3 is actually going to feature Tony Stark leading a new cast of characters for Avengers 3. So he's going to assemble the Avengers in a different way. And now there's a couple ways they could lead into this. Um, rumors, again, rumors, I've read it on several different places, is that in Thor 3... Um, Because, again, Chris Hemsworth has two more movies. One is going to be a Thor, because they're trying to do trilogies for all the main ones. Thor 3, something happens to Odin, and Thor kind of steps up and has to take care of Asgard, so he cannot come back for the events of Avengers 3. And then in Captain America 3, it's, you know, especially in the end of Captain America 2, you kind of saw that he was a little disenfranchised with uh, the whole, you know, shield and everybody, the power and how they were kind of using it more for fear-mongering than for actually protecting people. They kind of had those themes, and so there's rumors that he might hand off the shield to somebody else at the end of Captain America 3. So that'll be interesting. And there's a couple characters that have been known to actually take over that. Hawk, uh, yeah, I believe that is his name, Hawk. Uh, you know, the guy flying, or, or Falcon, sorry, Falcon. Um He's been known to be Captain America, or I think he's just recently taken over. Also, the Winter Soldier um, has been a person that has taken over the Captain America shield. So that'll be interesting. Well, so that's that what might they be... need one of the movies already, right? Hmm? Yeah, the Winter Soldier, yeah, because yeah. uh, Bucky popped up in it. Um, and and they're, they're also talking about um, in Avengers 2, they might launch um, Hulk into space. Because Hulk goes to space. He does, actually, and then he goes to a planet and he becomes a gladiator. That's Planet Hulk series. So they're talking about all these ways of getting rid of these characters for at least one movie uh, before they bring them back for the whole ending because they want to make... You know what I would like to see? The Captain America thing? With him getting uh, a little bit disenfranchised and a little bit weary of it? The black suit uh, Captain America, which Hmm. happened back... uh, Apparently it happened as a response to uh, to Watergate and the creators being so ashamed of what happened at, during Watergate um, that he he was like black for he, he didn't wear the uh, the American the flag suit for for a year or two. 
So um, does he spray paint his shield black, and will Vibranium accept paint like that? I I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but that would be to interesting. See. That would be interesting. Like I, you know, I guess it would have to come up with a new controversy because it wouldn't be Nixon anymore relevant, but... That'd be interesting to see, like, if there's some big, like, if he's feeling like they're they're doing the wrong thing or whatever, and becomes ashamed for a while, and like that'd be, you know, adding more depth to his character. Um, Which and, Captain and real America is kind of the conscience of uh, the Avengers almost, because Tony Stark, you know, he's the Playboy billionaire; he can go off and do anything he wants. He doesn't quite have the down to earth feel uh, like the Hulk. He turns into a raging monster. <laughs> I mean, uh, you have. Thor, who's from a whole different world, who doesn't really have the values of, you know, and then Hawkeye and Black Widow are really just assassins. So Captain America is kind of what brings them and focuses them in to do the real good. Now, all those other characters want to do good, but sometimes they get led astray, it seems like. So having a black suit Captain America where he kind of loses faith would be an interesting way to do it. I, I think that'd be pretty cool. And, and again... They might do this, you know, in those trilogy enders so that they could come back for Avengers 4 and just kind of make everything, you know, crazy. Avengers 4, three. Huh? Avengers 3, you mean? No, Avengers 3 will be the new team led by Tony Stark because Captain America gave away his shield, Thor has to stay in Asgard, mm -hmm. Hulk's been launched into space. So these guys might, you know, take on, he might assemble another team for some other sort of crazy thing that's going on. I mean, the Avengers have no shortage of enemies. And I've also heard rumors of maybe they might introduce the Guardians of the Galaxy into Avengers 3, because we all know Thanos is a big villain for the Avengers, and they've showed him in some of the some little teasers here and there that he's going to eventually be one of their main bad guys. And they've also shown him in Guardians of the Galaxy. So we might see a team up with Tony Stark, Guardians of the Galaxy... Um, maybe a, a side superhero or two that gets thrown in there. Um, it is interesting because a lot of the cool universe that might get thrown in there is the, the Fox side of things. It's the you know the X Men, the Deadpool's, all those. Most of those guys haven't been in there, but uh, you know they are bringing Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver into Avengers Two, so maybe they'll be part of the new team yeah, as well. A lot of that's going to be interesting to see because. With the conglomerate stuff that Marvel's been doing, the Marvel Universe, they're missing some big chunks still. Mm -hmm. um, like, I keep thinking, like, hey, all this stuff would still be great, like these tensions building up. It'd be great to lead into Marvel Civil War, right? Or Secret Wars, one or the other. But they're missing X-Men. They're or missing Avengers versus X Men, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and they are, and which brings me over to another part of new, piece of news that has kind of come out amid all these different talks about what's going to happen with the Avengers. Um, and it's because Marvel has been reaching out to Sony, and they've also been reaching out to Fox, which Fox has kind of given them the cold shoulder because they're like, "Oh, we want." But Sony has kind of been disenfranchised a little bit. Amazing Spider-Man 2 did not do as well as I thought it would. So they've been reaching out, trying to figure out a way to reinvigorate their main superhero. And apparently, and I believe it was HitFlix.com did an interview with somebody from Marvel saying that they were trying to reach out to other studios to bring in their whole cast of characters, and they were willing to make compromises creatively and corporately. So they're saying, hey, we'll share the money, we'll make a compromise, to kind of gain access to more of their characters. Because... I mean, if you put Marvel Studios on it, it seems to be gold. Uh, look at Guardians of the Galaxy. Who knew about Guardians of the Galaxy really before they started being talked about? I really didn't. I was like, they're going to make a movie of that? Who? And I had to Wikipedia those guys yeah. before I really figured out what happened. And that I movie was, it was Marvel for a while. It was like, yeah. then it was like, oh, okay, some yeah. random Marvel superheroes. Yeah, it was like, who are these guys? They're not going to do any good, and they were huge. Everybody loved them. I mean, they did have a great cast. Don't get me wrong, um, and a pretty good story. But that movie blew up. So they've been talking with Sony's, especially been a little bit more, you know, willing to listen. And so I'm thinking. Spider-Man might be part of Avengers 3. Probably not. Who knows? There's no release date yet, though. But wouldn't he did join the Avengers in the comics for a while. I think that would be probably the coolest addition to the new Avengers team that would lead into an Avengers 4 where you could have more of the Civil War type thing. If only or Fox Secret Wars. Cool. Secret, or Wars, Secret Wars, they all work together, too. So. so 
and you know, which would be cool. So I mean, any of the I'm Marvel just wars give, would just be amazing. So. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm just gonna and and it could be that they're setting up Tony Stark's new team against some of the old team members from the Avengers one and two. So that could be a cool way to do it too. But I'm just gonna throw out my dream team of. Uh, Avengers 3. So this is assuming that Hulk, uh, Thor, and Captain America are all gone. So that's just assuming that. So it would be Iron Man, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. Of course, those guys would be left over, which kind of leaves you one superhero and two just really good humans, regular humans, because neither of the other two have superpowers. Um, you'll have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, because they're going to be introduced in Avengers 2. And who knows, maybe they go away. But then Spider-Man, and I'm not going to say all of the uh, Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy, just Groot. Only Groot. That's the only one you need oh, from that Groot. Group. Just Groot. He was the best of them all, and he only said, I am Groot. So, yeah. You don't need Star-Lord. You don't need everybody else. Just Groot. And make him do a little dancing scene again at the end, because that was the coolest part of the movie. Okay. <laughs> so That natural and, team. All right. And all right. then... And then this is just, again, fantasy team. Wolverine would be in there, too, because, I mean, Wolverine Here's was very integral with the Inve- Avengers, but Fox is never going to let it happen. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Fox is not lining the rip. Sony, Sony as a company is in trouble. They don't know what to do with Spider-Man. They're getting desperate, so they're going to do stuff, because if they don't figure out something to do with Spider-Man that generates money... They're, they might not have the money or be around to do the Spider-Man 4 or whatever. Um, yeah, which they don't... I mean, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 I didn't think was bad, but they probably probably put way too much money in there, and then they did something stupid like, oh, let's just bring Rhino, which they probably paid Paul Giamatti like a bazillion dollars, like at least a couple million, just to show up for 30 seconds of the movie. Made no sense, you know. A lot yeah. of these things... Uh, yeah. The Green Goblin in that was just not a good, not a good fit. I understood setting up the Harry Osborne character, but the way they didn't just didn't work. Uh, you know, so but you I, know did, I did like, hear the though. Shocker or Electro. I did hear that the um, the Amazing Spider-Man two video game what lived up to that uh, hype of the um, the Spider-Man two movie video game, which was the be- like one of the best movie video games ever. So they probably because they let you swing around New York free uh, freestyle, just like they did in Spider Man Two. That awesome. That's what they really concentrate on. Just make those video games and actually get them out because I don't think a lot of people play them because you don't expect movie video games to be good. But somehow they got some good a good team under the Spider Man Spider Man Movie Twos video games have been. Yeah. Good. And if you want to check out another good Spider Man video game, check out uh, Web of Shadows. It's been out for a while, so it's cheap, but it's another one of those where you get to free roam around the city as Spider-Man, and Mm. those are the best Spider-Man games. So, I don't know, let us know what you guys think. What characters should be in Avengers 3? Should they go this route and try to squeeze in these guys? You know, I mean, really, they're just trying to squeeze as many movies out of these contracts that they can, it seems like. Um, Do you think it's a bad idea? What is your fantasy Avengers team? That's actually what I want to hear. I don't want to hear about anything else. Let us know your fantasy Avengers team if if Fox and Sony and Marvel could play nice, who would be the best Avengers lineup? Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com, What's My Face.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's move it on to one of my favorite parts of the night. Because not only is it probably the easiest part for me to write, but it's also one of the most fun. Because I get to do a nice little voice. And it is called Quick Hits. <laughs> And Brennan likes it too because he can remix. Uh, throat slash. Uh. <laughs> He's like, I bought a DJ table at one point, and this is my skills. I did. He did. I did. He did. did. Alright, so here's the first quick hit. And apparently there is going to be a seven-part Dark Judges miniseries, which is in the Judge Dredd universe um, that's going to be released online later this month, and it's by the same person who produced uh, Judge Dredd or Just Dredd that came out a couple years ago. So if you were a fan of that movie, which I thought it was pretty decent, um, sounds like a pretty interesting... They're going to go with the bad guys, it seems like. Okay, Brendan's not a Judge Dredd fan. Next <laughs> quick hit. 
yeah, my throat's a little sore. But um, Fox potentially working on an X Factor TV show. It'll be a live action show, kind of X Factor. Not, not, not. Isn't there X- already an X Factor TV no, no, show? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But X Men X Factor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, I should have clarified that. Not a singing competition, <laughs> but an actual live action Marvel show. You know, so. It, it might be interesting. I mean, they're kind of trying to capitalize off of the arrows, the flashes. Constantine's coming out pretty soon. Agents well, of S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't done bad, so... Well, there we go. We were just talking about how Marvel hadn't really gone into the, the TV realm very much. So That's why I said I was going to talk about it later. Yay! Um, and so let's move it on to the next quick hit. And another Marvel thing. Marvel announces... Uh, they're releasing a comic, and I don't know if it's going to be a good comic. I just thought it was a funny concept. It's called The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Apparently she talks to squirrels. What? Yep. Squirrel Girl. Coming come to a comic store near you. They're ripping me Climbs off. Climbs up trees and goes chirp, I chirp, wrote chirp, a story chirp, called chirp, Squirrel Girl. When did you write a Squirrel Girl I story? I did. I did. In high school, I did. And it was published in the paper because it was funny. It was, was a it about a girl? Story. Who climbs up trees and fights crime? Kind of. It was really about the creator and how apparently like he writes this stupid comic book just to get some money and it becomes a national phenomenon or like a world phenomenon. And people like see all this kind of deep meaning in it. And he was just like, I just wrote something stupid and he's like going crazy. But well, he so hates it. Girl. Anyway. <laughs> Produced by Brendan Foley. Maybe not. Idea originally stolen from Brendan Foley. That's I don't know. Right. I don't know if they wrote it before I did, but I had no one knowledge of this. Yeah, my story <laughs> is clearly the better one. Yes, yes, that is true. For sure, it was hilarious. It was, it was deep. Anyway, <laughs> and let's move it on to the next quick hit. And now this isn't really a traditional quick hit. I just read it and I thought it was funny, so I wanted to share it with you. Apparently, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, sometimes when they release movies in different markets, they have to kind of change the name for translation purposes. Uh, Japan is known for that. China is known for that. So uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, their Chinese title is called Interplanetary Unusual Attacking Team. (laughs) And I just thought that was kind of funny. So... (laughs) I wanted, I wanted to throw that out. Fair universal attacking team. Yeah, so if you go to China and you're like, what about that Guardians of the Galaxy movie? They'd be like, who? And then you're like, interplanetary unusual attacking team. And they're like, yeah, we love that movie. So, yeah. yeah I just thought it was some comedy. Right. But let's move it on to the last quick hit. And so this weekend in box office, uh, you had Gone Girl coming in number one, the David Fincher, Ben Affleck project, uh, at $38 million in box domestic box office, followed closely by Annabelle, which I believe came in with $31 million in domestic box office. Annabelle was a horror movie about a doll. Yeah. Those are pretty close, though. For, for yeah, no, I mean, two. it was actually um, the highest grossing October weekend ever. Wow. So, so. Okay. Um, so that's pretty big, yeah. And um, just one note about doll movies. They should not scare you. Dolls are usually pretty, pretty pretty flammable. I never understood the Chucky movies because I'd be like, it is a little doll. I will beat it up. It has a knife. Okay, well then... It's you. But it can't reach doorknobs. So I'll just run out of a door and close it. <laughs> what if it can reach the doorknob, Ryan? It's not that big of a doll, all right? It's not, it's not it a four-foot doll. No, it's, it's fine. Some... It, that jumping would take too much time. Plus, it has little short legs. I can run faster than this doll. All right. Doll movies are not scary, all right? That's all I've got to say. Not scary. At all. But that was your quick hits of the night. All right, so let's move it on to our last story of the evening, and that is talking about Halo 5. And the really thing I want to talk about is recently, um, rumors are that Master Chief will not be the main character of Halo 5. It'll be a character called Agent Locke. Now, you might be like, who's Agent Locke? And that's probably because he has not been introduced to us yet, I don't believe. Maybe a little bit here and there in Halo 4, 
but really Halo Nightfall, which is releasing with the Halo 4 Master Chief collection, um, is going to introduce him in their live action series. And so uh, that's kind of upset me, because Master Chief is one of the most iconic game characters of all time. He's the reason you bought an Xbox. He's the reason you bought an Xbox 360. For all I know, he's the reason you'll buy an Xbox One, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, because they ruined it. But... Um, He'll be the reason you don't buy the Xbox One, because he won't be there. Yeah. Other than in just reboots. And so, I mean, I kind of look at this like, why would you, it's like making a Sonic game and being like, okay, Sonic the Hedgehog is not in the game. It's like, what? Why would you call it Sonic then? Or saying, here, try the new Super Mario Brothers, and neither Mario nor Luigi is in the game. It's like, you, you just can't do that. You know or, what did kind of do that? Remember the Donkey Kong, the first uh, Donkey Kong Country set of games? Yeah, well, Diddy was still in there. In, in two, in he two. was, and then in three, he wasn't. Oh, yeah, that's kind of stupid. That's why three did not sell well, and number one is still the classic. That's true. So, yeah, uh, you know, so I didn't quite understand this. Now, this came out when they were interviewing the guy who was playing Agent Locke. I didn't write down his name, so it must not be that important. And he kind of released details saying that, yeah, I'm doing some voice acting for that, and, and my guy will be the main character. He's got a lot of cool new weapons and everything like that. And it's like, oh, cool. But why would you ruin this for us? Uh, it's just stupid. So, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of other games where they did this, and you may mentioned a good one um, with the the whole... Uh, Donkey Kong Country. Donkey yeah. Kong. That's what they... I knew they, That's what I meant. I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> but, uh, um, but if you remember, Metal Gear Solid came out, introduced Snake, Solid Snake to the world, and everyone's like, man, this character's awesome. We love this guy. Metal Gear Solid 2 came out, and I was like, oh, I can't wait to be Snake again. And they're like, here... For the first five minutes, you can be Snake. And then we're going to take you and make you a, a different guy, totally. And if you look at reviews for the Metal Gear Solid games, now I did play through Metal Gear Solid 2, and I thought it was just as good as Metal Gear Solid 1 and Metal Gear Solid 3, but everybody hated it because you had to be this guy Raiden throughout the whole thing. And they're like, oh, no, no, I want to be Snake. Metal Gear Solid. Solid stands for Solid Snake. Why would you not let me be Snake? Makes no sense. And Another so, one? Another one I can think of, um, Kingdom Hearts 2. When you play for the first, like, however much of the game, boring part of the game, as Roxas or something, hmm. and not Sora, who's the main character from... It's supposed to be the main character. And you're just playing, and, you know, if you haven't seen it, check out uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 versus Resident Evil 4, and that sums everything up of why that was just stupid. So... Yeah, it just no one liked it. It's like why? I just why aren't when, we playing? When video games do this, and now maybe this is uh, what is it? Three four three studios trying to say, hey, we're not Bungie. Yeah, we can do cool stuff like Bungie, but we're gonna take it in a different direction. And again, I say, why? We all love Master Chief. There's just just let us be the faceless killing machine. That's all we want to be. Let us have it. Give the gamers what they want. Now you might say to me, Brian, well, why would you want to stifle some creativity and originality? If you want to be creative and original, develop your own IP. Do not ruin bungees. That's all I got to say about that. Do not ruin bungees. And yeah, and, and, and it's also kind of a marketing gimmick. I mean, it's like, hey, you should buy Nightfall just so you can tell who Agent Locke is because we all know it's like too much product tie-in. I shouldn't have to watch a video series, a mini series, to get the game. If anything, you should just give me the mini series with the video game, not like they're doing with the Master Chief Collection, not like that. But yeah, just... that's true. That's 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 weird. Um, to have to, yeah, yeah. If your video game franchise, out, everything should be self-contained in the video games. You shouldn't need any extra content. You can have extra content just. For, for giggles, whatever. But everything that you need to know should be in the games. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't shouldn't have to watch something or pay for something else. Shouldn't have to pay sixty dollars for a game and then pay another ten, fifteen, twenty, doesn't matter how small or much much it is, to be able to get the premise of the game you're playing. It's, yeah, that should all just be extra. extra it's like I hate the DLC that comes out first day. They're like, hey, like, like Street Fighter got in trouble for doing this. They're like, hey, here's your normal cast of characters, and if you want, on your day one, you can buy another two characters. It's like, no, just give us those characters, and then DLC comes out later. But it's just... 
uh, it's just ruining one of my favorite franchises in video games, and that is the Halo franchise. Now, that being said... Bungie is still doing something really good, and that is Destiny. I did get it last week, and it is amazing, but I do need people to play with. So hit me up. Uh, let me know if you want to play with me. Um, comments down below. Of course, Edward's my face on Twitter. I'm Master Killer Shake. I play it for PlayStation 3, so you know, let me know. I, I would like to run around and, and play with other people because Brendan doesn't seem to want to get it. Jerk. I, I do. I just have other things to do. Right I'm now. playing Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. I'm playing Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I don't fun. know. Let us let us know what you think about any of the Halo topics. Hit us up. Comments down below, of course. At what's my face on Twitter? What's my face at gmail.com and uh, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. If you'd like to play with me again, hit me up. A master killer shake on PS3. So uh, hit us up. Let us know. But it's uh, gonna do it for us tonight. As always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Yes, we will. If Brendan ever gets the song ready. I have to hit the save button, Brian. From Tuesday Night Special. And tonight is a Tuesday Night Special, so you're really fitting. <laughs> everybody well, if I can find the